game, you're going to get better efforts at home play. You're never trailing by a score of 9-1. to one. Ty Wigginton has been on fire last night. A couple of RBI base hits for the last 10 games. He's hitting just shy of 400, and he's been almost unstoppable. Now, this is amazing in the sense when we was in Florida, when he went against the same car up Pavano, he hit a ball to right field. And, David, you don't, you're talking about it during that broadcast. For a right-hander to hit the ball out to right field in Florida, almost impossible. But he has been on fire. Very rare. Everything he hits, he seems to hit hard like that. Shut up, Pavano. As Tom said, over the last 11 games, 400. And with power, the team record, eight consecutive games with an extra base hit. Ty Wigginton back in the lineup tonight against Carl Pavano and the Florida Marlins. We'll have it for you. And the starting lineups, game two of the series from Shea, coming up in just a moment. Fans are hoping to see some very good baseball inside of Shea Stadium tonight. That is because there is no team hotter in the National League than the Mets. They are on a roll right now, and they are hoping to keep that going tonight against the first place Florida Marlins. This has been a big week for the Mets. It seems like everything is going their way. They've gotten some solid pitching and some very timely hitting. All of that has made for a very tight race in the and uh, we have guys step up on a nightly basis, get big hits, big pitching performances, whatever it may be. And, uh, you know, we just got to keep it up. Got a long ways to go, though. And the Mets will look to make it five in a row tonight when we come back with a first pitch. Cool and crisp evening here at Shea Stadium and game number two coming up. It's our local Jeep dealers bringing our Spanish viewers the chance to enjoy tonight's telecast in Espanol with Billy and Juan. Tom Seaver, Dave O'Brien with you from Shea. As we give you a look at the starting lineups, they are brought to you by your Tri State Quality Ford store. First, we peek in on the weather. 64 degrees right now. The wind out of the south at about 10 miles an hour. Cloudy, but no threat of rain. And now for the defending world champion Marlins, who dropped four in a row. It'll be Juan Pierre at the top. He's in center field. They have flip flop Castillo and Pierre. This is what they started out the season doing, Pierre and Castillo. With Mike Lowell hitting out of the three hole. Miguel Cabrera in right field. Hesop Choi in first. Damian Easley is at shortstop with Mike Redmond, the catcher. Abraham Nunez in left field tonight. And Carl Pavano is the pitcher batting ninth all up against Steve Traxel as he leaves the dugout. Five and three. An ERA of 310. Traxel has been superb here at Shea. Tom Seaver, four and one with an ERA of 111. Minuscule, I think, is the word that we use in our opening, and those are minuscule numbers when you get to his ERA, and it is, well, he enjoys pitching here, and I think he, probably as much as anybody, right along with Jay So, has really helped with Rick, Rick Peterson to be the new pitching coach. Trax really started to turn it around last year. He was a very dependable pitcher, and he has picked right up, well, even better than where he let off last year. And, you can pitch at home, and this is a great part to pitch in, but doesn't mean you're you know, not going to give up runs, but a 1.1 earned run average, holy mackerel. That's lights out. Well, tracks along the mound here at Shea this evening, and we'll look at the defense brought to you by your local Lincoln Mercury dealers for the Mets in the outfield. Cliff Floyd, Mike Cameron, Kareem Garcia, left to right, Todd Zeal, the start at third base, Kaz Matsui at short, Ty Wigginton very comfortably Cementing himself over there at second base, Mike Piazza started first base, and Jason Phillips behind on play. As he said, Ty Wigginton, who went through the minor leagues as a second baseman, so this is not new to him. And he has been absolutely been on fire with the bat. Jose Reyes in town, taking some big league baseball games in. And it depends on what day you listen. You know, David, one day he got a chance to come back the next day he's got no chance to come back so well good to see him here and I know that the plan is for his ball club to uh, kind of whet his appetite again about being here in a big league stadium and around big league teammates and maybe speed things up a little bit we just saw a shot of Jack McKeon there and there's a little disharmony interrupting the Marlins once smooth sailing this week A.J. Burnett openly criticizing the club's decision to make his first start back from Tommy John surgery a road start. He wanted to pitch in Florida. Josh Beckett was so angry with the team trainer for recommending he go on the disabled list with that blister 
that he blasted the guy in the press. He called him an idiot. And Jack McKeon scrawled on the visiting clubhouse chalkboard last night here at Shea. Leave your egos at the door. We won the championship with 25 men last year. Firing a shot across the bow there. That's exactly. A little, a little civil unrest in the clubhouse. Dontrell Willis. Young left here on that ball club, and I, you know, Jack McKean is a guy that doesn't really make any difference if you like him or dislike him. If you play for him, you play 100% and you play as a team, and that's his message. And they started out very well and have been pretty much 500 since. Well, Traxel starts out the ball game with strike one on Juan Pierre. He's hitting 313, no homers, 16 runs batted in, but as you see over the last 10, he has been cold. Now, they have been batting him in the two slot. That worked out well for about a week or 10 days. And now that they've dropped four in a row, McKeon, who is always going to fiddle with his lineup given the chance, drops Castillo from the leadoff spot back to number two. A 575 team ERA, and a lot of that is bullpen trouble. Their bullpen has been awful outside of Armando Benitez. In their last five games, an ERA of 6.52 out of the pen. So the Mets have been going the other way, ripping off four straight wins. Pavano and his teammates are struggling. Although Carl Pavano is actually pitching very well. One ball and two strikes on Pierre. Traxel says yes to Phillips and the pitch. He would not chase it, two and two. Pierre 0 for 4 last night, and he's just one out of his last 13 over his last three games. So he's been part of the trouble. He laces a base hit the other way over the shortstop. Cameron into the alley to cut it down. And Juan Pierre is on with a single against a pitcher he usually does not hit very well at all. Just three out of 21 against Traxel coming into tonight. Well, this is not a good start for Traxel because one of the best assets of the Florida Marlins is speed at the top of their lineup. Fastball out over the plate and pitched away. You can wait longer and longer, and that's the easiest pitch to hit if you have two strikes on you. But when you got Juan Pierre and Luis Castillo at the top of the lineup, it's one of the best assets for the Florida Marlins, and they because they can run with anybody at the top here. And they really push for that first run. Everybody wants to get that first run on the board, but because of that speed factor, they take a lot of chances early in games trying to get that one to nothing lead. Tony Larusa is one of those managers that had a statistical analysis and you know, figured out that if you score first, you win 73% of the time or whatever. Many times when you score first, you score a multiple of runs. But Castillo on the left side takes the fastball in there for a strike. Now a bit lost in Jay So's strong performance in last night's 4 to 1 beating of the Marlins. Ty Wigginton's run of extra base hits as well was the fact that the Marlins managed only three hits all night. Mike Stanton and Braden Looper combining for three no hit frames after Jay So left the hill. Castillo had one of those hits. He was one for four. And Pierre back in on his feet. Just getting started here at Shea. The Marlins have dropped four straight. The Mets have won four in a row. And the New York Mets now a game over 500 again at 27 and 26. They're tied for third place in the East. Two and a half games behind the fish. Little blooper caught out of the air by Zeal. Double play possibility. Got him. Pierre did not get back. A little soft liner to Todd Zeal. He had the option to play that either way. He's a smart player, experienced player at third. I think out of the corner of his eye, he had Juan Pierre to see if Pierre was taken off or not or holding right there. And it's just experience to be able to do that. If you go to 6 4 for I mean 5 4 3 double play, you're probably not going to get it because of Castillo. So Zeal correctly judging. Let's take the out and try to get the double play at first base with the runner going back to first. Smart little play right there by Zeal at third base. So that sends up Mike Lowell with the base is empty. Swings it's a mile high pop into short left. 
Out goes Matsui. Floyd in, and that's it. Traxel, even though he gives up the leadoff single, faces only three batters in the first inning. The Mets coming up. Nothing, nothing at Shea. The right-hander Carl Pavano comes in four and two for the Marlins, an ERA of 3.57, and he was very effective in the Marlins' 10-inning victory over the Mets last week. And he went seven innings, giving up just six hits, although he had no decision in a game that went extra innings. But Florida is eight and two when he starts, and he misses low for ball one. There you see the starts for Pavano, four and two, and very. Acceptable three and a half earned run average, seven and each, seven and each pitch, 64 hits. Swing fly ball left center. Pierre on his horse into the gap. And it's time to run it down with a one handed catch. Gaz Matsui been swinging a pretty good bat. He's hit safely in six out of seven. The starting lineup brought to you by your tri state quality Ford store. Todd Seal coming up. Then it's Cliff Floyd, Mike Piazza, Jason Phillips, Kareem Garcia, and the red hot Ty Wigginton. Mike Cameron at center also getting his stroke back again and tracks all the pitcher batting ninth against Carl Pavano the 6 5 right hander one down the base is empty for Todd Zeal it was 0 for 4 in game one last night but wrapping up a huge week of game winning homers and big hits getting 267 with half a dozen homers and he takes a strike. Todd will be 39 in September, but it's the kind of week that could make a, an older guy like him think about changing his mind about retirements. Now, I talked to him in spring training. He said, "Yeah, one more year, and this is it." And when the Mets signed Todd Zeal, you figured they signed him as a backup. He could play first. He could play third base if you need be, or he could be a pinch hitter. Brings experience. Brings a professional air to the clubhouse. He really knows how to play the game. He got 131 RBIs coming into excuse me 131 at bats coming into this ball game here tonight. Been in 45 games so far for the Mets. 19 it's, RBIs. It's a great point. I I thought maybe 230 at bats. Yeah. Tops for the year. Yeah. But he's going to go way over that playing every day. You know when you swing a hot bat you don't take it out. You don't take that bat out of the lineup. You find a place for it to to sit and play. He can play first base. And the wonderful thing about a guy like Zeal as a pinch hitter, when he comes in as a pinch hitter, is that he knows, he is so experienced, he knows how to attack a pitcher as well, especially young pitchers. Well, he's made Julianne the promise that he'll be coming home when the baseball season is over, and that'll be it for him. Let's take a look at our defense here tonight for Marlin, for the Marlins, brought to you by your local Lincoln Mercury dealers in the outfield. Abraham Nunez, Juan Pierre, Miguel Cabrera, Mike Lowe, Damon Easley on the left side of the infield, Castillo, and he stopped Choi, the first baseman. Mike Redman is doing the catching. Cliff Floyd with the bases empty on a couple of fly ball outs, and he takes low for ball one. Floyd two for four last night. He has a little connection to Carl Pavano. You go back two Julys. The Marlins traded Floyd to Montreal for Pavano. They were the two key players in an eight player deal. Cliff was in Montreal just 15 games before they traded him to Boston. So he played for three clubs in 2002. And they played in about 150 games too. Yep. Here's the other connection. He connects well against Pavano. A 412 lifetime clip. The right hander, 6'5, 241 pounds. Swinging a high, pop twisting foul out of play. Good cut right there, just late on it. He was right on it. With the exception, just a fraction late. But Cliff Floyd is a guy that can hit the ball to the left field. This is a good swing. He's right on the ball, just a fraction late. Big long extension at the end. Cliff chatting before the game about his little seven month old girl. Swinging a high deep drive to right. Way up there. Way, way back. This one sailing for the corner and gone. He continues to connect against Pavano as he blasts that one into the seats at Shea to make it one to nothing. Home run number five for Cliff. You mentioned Tom the swing he had on the foul down the left field line 
how he was just a little bit behind it just missed it. He got this one to drive and pull down the right field line and gone. Nelson of Mike Piazza. Mike takes a strike. He was right on that pitch right before this. He just turned the dial up a little bit. The difference that pitch was supposed to be in. And that made Cliff Floyd explode a little bit faster. There are two good swings in a row. One foul off, and one home run, and a very quick lead for the Mets. A nice grab by the fan as well. Still counts as a run for Cliff Floyd and the Mets, though, doesn't it? Piazza lines that one up the middle. A sharp single into center field. Mike came in hitting 305. That's going up. Another guy who has hit Pavano well. A lot of the Mets in tonight's lineup have pretty good lifetime numbers against him. Even though they did not hit him terribly well last weekend. Here's Jason Phillips. Mets trying to make it a five game win streak. You have to go back to August of 2002. To find the last time a Met club has won as many as five in a row. Piazza with a single after the big fly by Floyd. Phillips trying to keep it going here with two out. He got jammed. Lowell, an easy play, and the fielder's choice ends the inning. But not until Cliff Floyd takes Carl Pavano out of the ballpark at Shea Stadium. A high deep drive to right, and it is one to nothing. Mets on top one nothing on a Cliff Floyd solo drive okay. and we go on to the second inning with Miguel Cabrera about to lead things off against the right hander Steve Traxel. Cabrera hitting 286 and he's pounded out 13 home runs big right hand hitter with excellent power but still learning at the big league level despite his success in the postseason last year by the way he's had early success against Steve Traxel he's four out of eight with a homer. Against track so far. Steve trying to keep this run of excellent starts by the Mets going. The New York staff has given up just eight runs in the last four games. So Rick Peterson making his mark, and that one torched down the left field line on a bounce. Floyd actually barehands it, and Cabrera takes a wide turn, but heading back to first base. Well played by Cliff Floyd deep into the corner. Let's go downstairs to Kip. Well, guys, prior to tonight's game, a $100,000 check was given to Project ALS. I'm joined by Valerie Estes from Project ALS. For people that don't know, tell us what Project ALS is. Project ALS is trying to put a little high heat to, uh, to scientists worldwide to try to understand a disease called ALS, which to many baseball fans is better known as Lou Gehrig's disease. Now, how did the Mets get involved in this? Well, gosh, it, that was kismet. It was our great fortune to meet Debbie Wilpon and, and Fred Wilpon and the entire Mets organization, and they just came right on board, and the Mets is New York's team, and I think they're now part of the family that's going to be this disease. Now, I know this is the second year that the Mets and Project ALS have been together. How has this grown, and what are the wives doing? I, I guess I should mention, guys, all the players' wives are involved in this, and they're sitting around us right now. You ask what do wives do? What don't they do, ladies? <laughs> Yeah, the Mets wives have been so hospitable. They've just welcomed us with open arms, and, and they're really helping us make a dent in this disease. Valerie, thank you very much for your time. Guys, back to you. Kip, thank you. He's going pretty good. Life's pretty good for our, our man Kip right now. Absolutely. How does he get a job like that? He's uh, he's paying somebody off because <laughs> you and I are stuck up here, and you don't smell nearly as good as the group no, that he's know. with. Believe me. Aesop Choi hitting 250, 11 home runs. He has Miguel Cabrera on at first base with nobody out here in the second inning. And Traxel from the set. Up and in for a ball. By the way, Matthew Broderick is supposed to be joining us a little bit later. Here at Shea Stadium to help send out that message, the Night to Believe message to benefit Project ALS. Art Howe, Denny Walling, we're throwing batting practice to celebrities at 3.30 today. Was Michael here for that? You know, I don't know. Michael was, but Matthew was. I know. I mean, uh, Matthew. Excuse me. <laughs> was Matthew here? <laughs> he was not here. Little trickler, swinging bunt, and Phillips took a peek at second on to first to get the shore out, and Cabrera into second. That amounts to a sacrifice bunt. Do you know if he was here? 
Was Matthew I, here? I believe he was not here. That's the word I. If he, if he was, we'll see him on tape. I'm sure of that. Yeah. Jason Phillips makes the easy out at first base. Troy does not run well at all. Oh, he had plenty of time to think about going to second base there. That's the kind of play you almost take a shot at second anyway, because you know you're going to get that at first. Troy just doesn't run, can't run a lick. A big guy, 6'4, yep. about 245. It's a power game, not a speed game for him. Damien Easley hitting 271 with a homer. He's driven in two. Traxel firing. The breaking ball hits the corner for a strike. Take a look at it again. See where the runner coming from first. Not great speed there. You got a chance. You got a chance there to get a 2 6 3 double play. And Jason Phillips makes a shift. If, if, if you're any doubt at all, you got to get one out. Make sure you get one out. You'd love to get the lead out. You'd love to get two outs. But at minimum, you got to get an out. Everybody, a lot of players try to force it. If I'm going to get this double play, boom, then all of a sudden, pitcher ends up with runners at first and third and nobody out. Then you're in trouble. But early in a game like this, it's only one and only, just getting started. If, as long as you know, if, if, if you're not, if you're not absolutely sure, boom, you can get get that lead run. Just take, get one out. That's the other thing about defense, making choices. Everybody's going to make physical errors. I mean, nobody goes through a season without making an error. It just doesn't happen. But it's the mental errors that are, that are difficult to overcome because you add outs. You add those un, you know, those outs that you don't expect to give the uh, opposition offense. Two balls and one strike on Easley. That one tap foul. Mike Redmond would be the next hitter. You ask somebody, they say, what's the most important out of the inning? Well, it's the first out. Just get the first out. Because a pitcher after that can get out of an inning with one pitch. You've always got that in the back of your mind. You can set up a double play ball, walk a runner to get to first base, and then get yourself a double play, get out of, get out of a tough inning or a situation with just one pitch. Cabrera at second with one away. Tracks are looking to get easily here. And a tough contact hitter up next. Swinging a high fly center. Cameron back but with room. Cabrera back to second base. He's going to take off for third. The throw is not going to get him. So Cabrera safely down to third base on a fly out by Easley. And the tying run is 90 feet away with two out for Florida. Well, Cameron behind the ball comes in, getting it going toward the infield on a good, strong throw. And aggressive base running by Cabrera. One thing you do not want to do in this ball game, up in the game of baseball, you do not make the third out at third base. If you're going to go over there, you got to make sure that you can get there. That young 21 year old, he's going to be a pretty good player. Well, they think he'll be a monster hitter. The question is going to be where do they play him on a consistent basis? As he came up as an infielder, they've used him in left field, they've used him in right field. And where to play Miguel Cabrera, but wherever he plays, he's going to get 600 at bats. Yeah, you give him six, 600 ABs is right. Here's Mike Redmond. You give him 600 ABs, he'll get 100 RBIs for you, at minimum, probably. We saw him, he, was, he had a lot of trouble in right field when we were down in. These two clubs went at it down in Florida. Probably going to end up in left field. He's got a decently strong arm, but he's still learning that outfield position. Also been playing with a bit of a sore groin lately. The 1 0 pitch fouled away by Redmond, a 269 hitter. And pretty good with two outs and a man in scoring position. Last night as a team, the Marlins just one out of five with runners in scoring position. A big part of their 4 to 1 loss here. Jack McCann, who took over the Marlins on May 11th of last year, he led the Marlins to a 75 and 49 record. They were 10 games under 500 when he was hired. They went on to win the wild card, 91 wins, shocking upsets of the Giants, the Cubs, and the Yankees, en route to this second World Championship. But I think Tom, right now, you can safely say, as we, as we mentioned, a little disharmony for this team, and maybe for the first time since McCann took over. There's controversy with this Marlin team. You know, it's funny, David. They're in first place. Yeah. <laughs> this club's in, they were world champions last year, and they were they're in first place right now. 
And a lot of times, you know, people, you might just put a whole bunch of mirrors in that locker room. And just tell your players, every time you go by, make sure you look at it. Make sure you look yourself in the mirror. So are you doing 125th of what you're supposed to be doing here? Are you contributing to the success of your teammates? Or are you just, you know, contributing to the success of yourself? And, you know, a lot of players will forget how hard they worked together to win a world championship. I mean, that's a... You know, it's, it, it, many people tell you it's easy to win a world championship. It's very difficult to repeat for the numerous reasons. 3 1 pitch, the fastball in there for a strike, all full now on Redmond. We showed you the World Series hero, the young Josh Beckett, who right now is on the disabled list with a blister problem. Jack McKeon's scrawl on that blackboard inside the clubhouse yesterday, I think it was really aimed at Beckett more than anybody else as far as. Leave your, your ego at the door and 25 guys to win a world title. 3 2 hammer down a right field line, but that's going to slice off into the corner down there. And the count remains 3 and 2. And the gist of it, I mean, everybody's got an ego in this game. You can't do anything if you don't have an ego. It is how do you use it? You know, do you use it in a positive vein or a negative vein? You use it for yourself and for your teammates or against them? Do you wear it on your sleeve or do you hold it in your heart? I mean, that's. You, you can't do anything well if you don't have an ego because you're not taking pride in it. And I think that's McKeon's message here. Let's leave that negative ego right outside the door. Don't bring it in this room. Bring all the positive ego that you can. Bring it right in here and share it with your teammates. And that's and they're not doing that right now. Traxel trying to keep that man at third base, swinging a line shot, hooking and foul. So Redmond hit it stiff, but just a little bit off the chalk line. Well, left field corner, right field corner. And by a couple of feet down that left field line. Redmond in the series in Florida was struck on the forearm by a pitch, knocked him out of the lineup for a day or two. Showing no ill effects on that swing. Traxel trying to keep him right there at the dish. But Redmond, a very tough guy to strike out. Cabrera leading from third and it's low for ball four. That'll bring up Abraham Nunez. Runners at first and third two out. That's what you call a pretty good professional at bat right there by Mike Redmond. Eight pitches. He got some good hacks. Foul ball down the right field line. He hit well. Pulled that ball down the left field line. Hit that ball well. Kept himself alive. Gets himself a base on balls. Can, keeps a rally going. Good professional at bat right there. Nunez playing in left field tonight, hitting out of the eight slot. He's only batting 222, no homers. But he has two out there right now with two down. It's an interesting decision by McKeon to go with the young Nunez instead of a veteran guy like Jeff Conine tonight, especially given the fact that Conine has really pounded on Traxel in their career battles. First pitch outside for ball. Jeff Conine, a 368 hitter with two home runs off of Traxel. But McKeon, one thing he has shown is he doesn't mind trampling on people's feelings if it means straightening this ball club out. And he can certainly get creative as he showed in the World Series in the playoffs. He went foul away for strike, and it's one and one. He brought in Pavano as a reliever, Penny and Beckett all to relieve at various occasions last year in October. And it paid off with a World Series ring the size of a manhole cover. One ball and one strike. Traxel checking the runner at first. That's Redmond. Cabrera at third. Two and one. Pavano, the on deck hitter. So we'll see if Traxel minds loading the bases if he would pitch around Nunez. Certainly, he'd rather have Carl Pavano leading off the next inning. Swing popped up. Catchable. Zeal in fair territory. He's got it. And Traxel wriggles away despite a single and a walk in the inning. He gets out of it without a run being scored. And it's still one to nothing, the Mets. Home half of inning number two coming up from Shea. Tom Seaver, Dave O'Brien with it as Kareem Garcia gets ready to hit against Carl Pavano. One to nothing, New York on a Cliff Floyd solo homer. 
Kareem hitting 236. He has homered six times. A couple of hits last night, though, two for three. Ty Wigginton, who's been scalding the ball, coming up next, and then Mike Cameron fouled away by Garcia. A different look to this Met club, and Tom, we talked about it at the top of this stretch of 12 straight games against just the Phillies and the Marlins, first and second place teams in the division. It started back on May 25th in a two game series against Philadelphia. Well, the Mets are 5 and 4 in that stretch so far. A strike to Garcia in its own two. And they were swept in Florida. That's the ironic thing about it. They turn it right around and went to Philadelphia and did the same thing to the Phillies. They stretched, you know, swept them when the Phillies were playing at home. The one thing about it that I think if there's anything more about this ball club is after that series in Florida, that every right to, well, let's say turn negative or not to expect that they had the ability to, ability to win. And they went to Philadelphia and they picked themselves up and they went right after the Phillies. And what happened? I mean, they're five and four and they lost three straight in Florida. You know, and that's, you know, that's, you compliment Glavin, you compliment Leiter, you compliment the manager and the pitching coach and Wigginton. And because when you start winning the games like that and picking yourself up after you've lost three games, everybody's chipping in physically and mentally. Somebody's in there saying, don't get, you know, don't get your hand, head down on the ground, boys. You know, come out from underneath that hat. Tapper to short. And in time to get Garcia by a step, Damian Easley on the money. Now here's a look at our Newsday quote book. Ty Wigginson just red hot. He says we have a very confident team right now. The biggest difference between last year and this is we're all coming to the park every day expecting to win games. And it's a mental attitude and a mental approach because you've heard you've also heard guys in this ball club talk about last year and the, the, when they had such a difficult year. They said well you, we would come to work and after a while I mean there's more than one person said it. We I wonder well, how are we going to lose this one today. And it's really confidence in yourself and in individually and collectively as a team. And it's just a mental, mental mindset. And all of a sudden now this year they said well how are we going to find a way to win today. Will it be Piazza. Will it be Wigginton. Will it be Glavin. Will it be uh, Todd Seal. Defense? Will yep. it be Cameron. Will it be who's going to be. Easily again up and over. Two down. Hello to six four first baseman over there. He stopped Choi. High throw from the shortstop, Damian Measley, but not a problem for the Marlins first baseman. Take a look at it again. A little sidearm throw. Wigginton hustling down the line. Got to rush a little bit. Gets it up. No. Six four. Don't worry. I'll get you up. I'll get you covered. Mike Cameron at 198. Seven homers, 19 RBIs. He was one for three with two RBIs last night in game one. And Mike stroking the big run scoring double in the second inning off of A.J. Burnett as the Mets took a two to nothing lead went on to win four to one and Mike showing some signs of getting his offensive act together over the last four games he's doubled three times he's driven in four runs rakes that one a little out in front for a foul down the line and getting the bat through the hitting area on the fastball much better. Take a look at this this pitch is up. Probably belt high, letter high, yeah, just about belt high, just out in front. A little break to it, something off speed, and you can see the hand flying off the bat, so he's just out in front. Had a big hit in that Florida series when the Mets had scored, and I think it was the last game they had scored a run, then he got a hit that hit a double down that left field line and drove in another run. More than anything else, it helped himself. Well, Mike says that I mean, it's not a case of the finger improving at all. That still hurts him on certain swings, especially the right field. When he goes the other way or hits one off the end of the bat, so that's not getting any better. But his timing's been better. I just think Mike Cameron's going to be a very streaky guy as he takes strike three, the breaking pitch right on the outside corner. Pretty good slider there by Carl Pavano to ring up his first strikeout of the game. The Mets lead it one to nothing. How do you say that? Do you say Jaguar, Jaguar, Jaguar? How do you say it, Tom? That's exactly right. <laughs> I think you can get away with all three, but there's supposed to be one 
definitive pronunciation of that. I word. think that they ought to send you one, let you drive it a year, and then figure out what you want to call I it. I like the yeah, way yeah. you think, my you friend. You like that line of thought, right? Outstanding idea. Get right on that if you don't mind. Can I ask you one more question? One more thing. What color would you like to have? Uh -huh. uh -huh. It's my second favorite question. <laughs> Yes. Carl Pomano I leading off the an answer. Yeah, I'm gonna, I, I may be able to get this done. Go into midnight blue. Midnight blue with the E crew interior, if you don't mind. I may not be able to pull that off. GPS, e you know. Uh -huh. Extra speakers. I want the TVs in the back. Got it. You know, built into the headrests. I can do that for yeah. you. Thank you, sir. You're the best. The one one from Traxel. Hammered towards short Matsui backs up a bit. And in plenty of time to get Pavano for out number one. We've got a second here. We will remind you that the 2004 season marks the seventh year of the J.P. Morgan Chase Baseball is for Kids program. Over 800,000 youngsters have experienced pet baseball thanks to J.P. Morgan Chase's belief in giving back to the community. No dream is too big if you have the right relationship. Our good friends at J.P. Morgan Chase. Hey, on the topic of good friends, we want to wish a very speedy recovery to the WB11 Sally Mathis. She's recovering in Forest Hills, Queens. Sally, we hope to get you back to work very, very soon. We're thinking about you. Here's Juan Pierre, base hit in the first inning. Back in the leadoff spot, and he takes a strike. The Marlins, despite the fact they have lost four in a row, they are still in front of Philadelphia by a couple of games because the Phillies also have lost four straight. Philly and Atlanta tonight. But put in perspective, on this day a year ago, the Marlins were six games below 500. They were 13 behind first place Atlanta. Cut on and missed by Pierre. They would then go 42 and 22 over the next two and a half months to pull into wild card contention. Eventually, they'd win it with 91 wins. They got Jeff Conine during that stretch. Won the wild card and the rest history. A little jam dribbler to Wigginton. Has to hustle and gets it over there in time to nip Pierre for the second out. Traxel running it right in on the thumbs of Juan Pierre, and that brings up Luis Castillo with nobody on base and two out. Traxel trying to pick up his sixth win of the season. Last year, Steve 16 and 10. A career best in victories. One of those wins came against the Marlins. He actually pitched very well against them all season with an ERA of 2.88. And this is a quick 1 2 3 inning. He gets Pavano, Pierre, and Castillo without hardly breaking a sweat. Still 1 to nothing, New York. Nice night out at Shea Stadium where the New York Mets have a 1 0 lead over the Florida Marlins. Cliff Floyd with a long home run to right field in the first inning off Carl Pavano. And the first pitch to Traxel is across for a strike. Now, which is bigger, the cotton candy or little junior? It's close. Now, the question is who's sweeter? That's what mom wants to know. It's a tie. <laughs> there it's a tie. That's a strike. 0 2. The ever, the ever present tie. Traxel at 250. He sits safely in six out of ten starts. And would not chase the pitch outside from Pavano. Carl Pavano last year won 12 games, a career high for him. He's had lots of elbow trouble on the DL with soreness and inflammation three times when he was with Montreal. He was acquired in the middle of the 2002 season by the Marlins. Jack McKeon left him out of the postseason rotation, though, last October. But Pavano pitched so well out of the bullpen, and McKeon gave Pavano the ball to start a key game six of the league championship series against the Cubs. Tom Seaver, one of your worst nightmares, lingering in the distance. Giant head of Mr. Metz. It's just a matter of time. Pavano lobs it over there for the out, and Traxel is retired. You know Mr. Metal make his way up here tonight just to see his old buddy Tom Seaver. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of Sterling Mets and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. The accounts and descriptions of this game such as they are may not be disseminated without express written consent of Sterling Mets. 
Bill Webb at work in the truck tonight. Nothing escapes him, does it? How could how could that giant sphere escape him? <laughs> I put a hammer to the shin. <laughs> that won't escape him either. I put a ball peen hammer to his shin. Oh no. Bait myself? Please. <laughs> talk talk of violence. Really unnerves me. Kazmet Sui for one. He's fly to center. And Todd Zeal will follow him. The Mets in front one to nothing each side with two hits in the early going. Now, talking about Pavano and his success in the playoffs last year that game six that he started against Chicago pitched very well it was into the sixth inning it was a game the Marlins had to win where they would have been eliminated they won it eight to three lace but fouled on the left field line and a deep drive off the bat of Matsui the other way and a bid for his sixth home run. And of course the Marlins won the next night when Josh Beckett pitched four innings out of the bullpen. From that Pavano earned a World Series start. He actually outpitched his idol Roger Clemens in game four. He went eight innings giving up one run had no decision and game the Marlins won in 12 innings. So Pavano had a very good October despite being left out of the rotation initially. That's in there for strike three. That's a beautiful pitch right there. It was fastball, sinkers away, everything away, away. Then the breaky ball, Matsui totally fooled right on the corner. Ball was up a little bit, but look at the location on the plate. Right on the corner. And Matsui just turned and walked away. You know, you're talking about Pavano on this staff for the Florida Marlins. And if you had a ball club where every pitcher looked the same, there wouldn't be this variety of for the, the opposing team would have to adjust to. And Pavano brings that. If you stick him between, let's say, a Josh Beckett and a Burnett, you've got a guy in the middle who's a little on a little off, saw speed, change up, curveball away, this a little of this, a little of that, and then the other two guys in front of, front of, and the back of Pavano are two guys that you don't have to rush up on the ball to hit it. I mean, they're 95 plus guys. You don't want to build your entire staff as if they're all the same. That's why a guy like this is so invaluable to a ball club. And it, 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 it leads to you know you got you got Tom Glavin on the side for the Mets and every scout in the world if he scouted Tom Glavin today there's nobody would sign him because he didn't throw no ball 95 miles an hour. But you, if you, you really look think up even the, with that command do you think no one they're, they're looking for people to throw 95 miles an hour. I mean he wouldn't be. I'm sure somebody would sign it but I mean that's that is the mentality and the approach. Of these clubs signing individuals, the first thing they look at is velocity. Mechanics from the side, a little stiff on the front leg. Tom Glavin is well over 100 wins, over 500. And in the proverbial lingo of the clubhouse, he hasn't broke, broken a pane of glass yet. He's 100 wins over 500. And if he's not 100, he's close. But scouts now, they can go in and say, oh, this guy throws 98 miles an hour. Does he know anything about pitching? No, but he can throw 98 miles an hour. You know, if he can get it over the plate, nobody will hit it. Yep, 257 and 160, just about. Pretty close. And meanwhile, his buddy in Chicago, Greg Maddox, gets closer and closer to 300 career wins, now at 293. And rarely does he throw a pitch that can puff your lip. Take a look at the last pitch in off the plate. Yeah, the proverbial Greg Maddox does not great, uh, break a penny glass either. And he's 100 games over 500. 3 2 pitch, hammer to right field, backing up Cabrera. And he will make the catch shy of the track, and it's a 1 2 3 inning for Carl Pavano. Zeal 0 for 2 after what has been a tremendous week. So 1 to nothing, the Mets in front. Mets fans don't miss your chance to participate in Dunkin Donuts charitable online auction to benefit Mets Foundation. You can log on to Mets.com to bid on a variety of unique Mets items and experiences including the chance to throw out the ceremonial first pitch at Shea Stadium. Just visit Mets.com today to make your bid. Tom Seaver Dave O'Brien with you. Great to have you with us at Shea as we go to the fourth inning. One to nothing the Mets have the lead. Mike Lowell Miguel Cabrera and Hesop Choi is the heart of the Marlin batting order against Steve Traxel here in the fourth. Mike Lowell 0 for 2 in game one. Jay So walking him twice on eight 
consecutive pitches. Which was kind of unusual because when you look at what Lowell did last year against the Met pitching staff he did next to nothing against the rest of the league. He was practically an MVP but he hit just 176 against New York with seven RBIs in 19 games. He's never hit well at Shea. It's that one sharply but down to get it Wigginton at second base one up and one down a lot of ground balls from Traxel here in the first three and a third innings. He is keeping it down and that'll bring up Miguel Cabrera. Keeping the ball down and downward moving on the ball the sinker and the splitter that he throws a lot of hitters will go after it and hit the top half of the ball this is pretty sharply but you can see the downward moving on the ball that causes the ball to be hit the batter to hit the ball on top of the ball drives it into the ground. Cabrero the base hit in the second inning slashes away and fouls it back for a strike. The old proverbial sinker. You can ask Tommy Glavin about that too. You get a little downward. Hits. It's at the bottom half of that bat, not the top half. Keep the ball out of the air. This is a fine young looking player right here. Good swing, pretty simple, compact, quick. And just you're right, trying to find a place for him to play. A game winning home run in the first big league contest he ever appeared in last year. And throughout the playoffs, he was a terror. Clemens would knock him down and get right back up, hit one out of the ballpark. So he doesn't sweat anybody. He's hit 13 home runs so far. There are holes in his swing, as Andre Dawson, who is a Marlin advisor, told us last weekend when we were down in Florida. He said what they want him to do is handle that outside pitch better. Not try and yank it to left, not try and pull it, but to go to right because. Lord knows he has plenty of power to go the other way and still hit it out of the park. One ball and two strikes to count. And the key to hitting. That was a pretty good pitch right there by Steve Traxler. Might have split her or sink her inside. Good movement on the ball at the last second. And Cabrera keeps himself alive. See that ball go? That's split her. Now that's good hitting right there. You're not going to do anything with that. But if you keep yourself alive to get yourself another pitch, then you're having a pretty good at bat. Was not an easy ball to foul off either. Driven down the left field line, and that's going to be a fair ball on one bounce up against the 338 mark. Up and throwing Floyd, sliding in safely and barely in front of a good chuck by Cliff Floyd is Miguel Cabrera. He's two for two. A single and now a double for him. Talk about getting a pitch to hit. And this looks like the sinker and stayed up, came in the middle of the plate, middle in. Just about letter high. You got a quick bat inside, collapse that left side, and is able to keep it fair down that left field line. That's a little bit of Henry Aaron, Roberto Clemente all wrapped into one, or at least the potential and a terrific slide at second base. Not much hustle getting to first base, assuming it was going to be a double. But the straight leg in slide, that's the only reason that he beat it. He didn't hustle going around there, down to first base and around first. He assumed that Cliff Floyd and left field would, would play that as a two base hit. He did not. Almost got his man at second base. Well, it, I think it took a very fortuitous bounce to Floyd. It bounced right at him. It didn't die up against the fence and drop on the warning track. And Floyd made a real strong throw in the second. That's the assumption that the player, the veteran player, won't make. You know, a guy, if you, you, you never saw a guy like Willie Mays make that kind of mistake. He didn't assume that the ball would not come back right to the right to the outfield, and that's that's just the learning process. You say, well, it's you know it's going to be a double down the left field line. Whoops! Uh oh, it was a double by about five inches. That was it. Now Phillips out a quick consult with Steve Traxel, who has gone to two and zero on Hesop Choi. The other part, David, there's nothing wrong with those kinds of mistakes. And, you know, I mean, Cabrera got away with it second base. But that's the thing that a manager can really take a player to the next level. So you can't assume, Mr. Cabrera, that that ball is not going to be thrown, but come right back to that infield. You assumed it going to first base. And that's how the manager really can help his young players. Don't assume that it's going to be automatic stand up double. It's not. Sure. And you're talking about a 21 year old sure. who hasn't played that much baseball, let alone at the major league level. And you've got a lot to learn. And you hopefully you get somebody that is receptive. If you don't, if you didn't make mistakes, what good would it do? But the, mis the, the only mistake is that when you don't try to fix the mistakes that you make, that's the mark of the great player. Joy's driven in 27 runs as he lashes that one foul. 
He's also hit 11 homers. We talked about it earlier. His injury last year suffered at Wrigley Field and the collision with Kerry Wood. And of course, Aesop Choi got the worst of it, slamming his head down on the ground. He's out for several minutes. Had to be carted off on an ambulance. And inside a very hushed Wrigley Field, as his teammates gathered around, and many of them really shaken by it. Oh. As that head snapped back and he injured his neck. 3 1 pitch. I was watching it on TV and I was shaking by it. When he laid down, he just would not move. That was scary. I mean, it looked like one of those hockey injuries where the guy is, is just absolutely oh. lights out and does not look like he's going to recover soon, but he's bounced back and after the trade. Here to the Florida Marlins. He's settled in nicely at first base and, and certainly does not give them the defensive wizardry of Derek Lee. That's a work in progress for him. Lee's a gold glover. But in Hesop Choi, I think they're going to get more power. And over the course of his stay, maybe as many runs batted in as the 90 92 that Lee got them last year. Runners at first and second and tracks a little bit of a jam here. Only one out looking for a double play ball. He's already had one twin killing. That was in the first inning. Damian Isley 0 for 1 is fly to center. And he takes the first one low for ball one. The Mets have ripped off four straight. They're 8 and 4 in their last 12 games. And in fact, in the last 10 at home, Art Howe's team is 7 and 3. He took game one of this series last night, 4 to 1. Holding the Marlins to just three hits. Well, the Marlins have three tonight. The one nothing pitch that dips outside. Two and zero. Oh. Now the trend here for Traxel is unlike the first couple of innings, he's beginning to fall behind regularly. One and zero, oh, two and nothing. Yeah, very snappy first three innings, and he's up to 55 pitches, 23 pitches so far this inning, and just one out. Mets with a one to nothing lead thanks to Cliff Floyd and a solo blast in the first inning. 2 0 pitch. And that's a little bit high according to Rick Reed, the home plate umpire. 3 0. Well, if that's a breaking ball, you don't want it anyway. Let's see what this pitch is. Well, that's if you don't want that pitch to be a strike anyway. Those go about 400 feet. Those are the hitters. Those are the kind of hitters say, "Hold on, right here. I'll take care of this one." That's that's the uh, definition of the hanger. The three zero. He's taking all the way, and it's ball four. They're all loaded up on back-to-back -back free passes. That's the third walk in the game issued by Traxel, and here comes Peterson. So Traxel laboring here in the fourth inning. A double, a walk, and a walk, and they're all filled up. From Mike Redmond, and it looked like you know you're, you're right, David, in the sense that some of those pitches he looked like he was upset with the home run, home plate umpire Rick Reed. But that last pitch looked like it was up out of the strike zone anyway. The, the pitch before the breaking ball, you don't want that to that one to be a strike. Now Rick Peterson may be talking about mechanics. He may be saying make sure that you. Finish with your front left side. Make sure your leg gets up there. That buys time for your arm to get into position to throw the ball on a downward plane. All those little kind of fundamental ABC things. Well, he has been spectacular at home. Traxel has. Yeah, an ERA of 1.11 in his home starts, which is the lowest ERA of any starting pitcher in the National League. Here's Redmond now. The base is jammed up. He drew a walk in the second inning. One thing Redmond's going to do is put the ball in play. He's very much a double play candidate, but he flies it to right toward the alley. Garcia on the run pulls up now to make the catch. Here comes Cabrera in to score. He races across the plate, and this one is tied at one. Redmond, a good professional hitter, picks up his 18th RBI on the sacrifice, and it's a 1 1 game. First pitch high fastball no breaking ball actually pretty good pitch right there hit by Redmond and got under it just a little bit. There's the runner at third base Cabrera remember he doubled after one out. Yep and the runner goes and we got a tie ball game the runner at second base. 
Aesop Choi tags up on the ball in the gap out there, and he will advance to third. Station to station right there. Tie ball game. Two down, and here's Abraham Nunez. He popped out to Todd Zeal his first time up in the second inning. A rangy switch hitter, only a 216. He's not hit a home run. He hit eight or nine home runs in spring training to make the team. That'll catch your eye if you're looking for a reserve outfielder to try and make your squad off the bench. And has an RBI chance with a man 90 feet away. Two down. Swings and fouls it away for strike one. He got somebody there. He got his own foot or he got Jason Phillips' foot on that foul ball. Yeah, it looks like Phillips, he's up. Walks off to the side. Look at the left foot. Watch the left toe. Nope, left knee. You know, right? See, on that shin gone, there's a little area that doesn't have a, a metal protector. There's kind of the elastic area between. On oh, the bottom part and the top part of the protector, right where you see that, right there, where it starts to separate, right there. And sometimes the ball will get under that, just get under the lip of that and hit you in that knee. Is there a technical term for what that area is? Yes, ouch. The 0 1 pitch drifts away just off the corner, one ball, one that would strike. Be just below the patella, ouch. just above the tibia. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Those are two rivers in Eastern Egypt. Made Egypt, that up, okay. Dr. Seaver. <laughs> Don't remember seeing you in chemistry. Oh yes. Skipping class again to go out and throw fastballs. Runners leading away on the corners. Traxel trying to make sure he gets out of the inning. One one. It's a surprise bunt. Chopped. The bare hand by Traxel. The dive. Got him. Piazza dug it out at first base. Nice play by Mike Piazza. Not to mention Traxel. And that saved a run. If he's safe, it's two to one Florida. Outstanding play on the dive. It's 1 1. Last half of the fourth inning coming up on a lovely night here at Shea Stadium. All tied up, Wandaman. Delighted to have Matthew Broderick with us. It's a night to believe in Project ALS. And Matthew, I know this is something you've been involved in for the last several years. You took a little batting practice last year, right? Yeah. Not this time. No, I was, uh, my arms are a little bit sore, and I, I, I feel I was up to I it. I figured the yeah. answer would be good on that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I went to a gym, unfortunately, oh, two you days did. ago, and, and almost, I can't lift my arms. Well, even even more reason, I get in there and flex them yeah. a little bit. I mean, oh, get that blood right. going a little. Uh, I don't want to hurt anyone. Uh, talk Especially about your involvement. Yourself. Talk about your involvement, Matthew, a little bit, first of all, in, in the Project ALS, and how you got involved in it to begin with and what it means to you on a personal level? Yeah, well, um, Jennifer Estes, uh, who founded it along with her sisters, was a very uh, dear friend of mine, and she was a producer at a theater that I was, uh, that I, I'm involved with. And she's a, just a wonderful, forceful woman, and she and her sisters and some friends developed this uh, project at ALS, and they've raised a fortune to uh, help with research for this disease. And uh, I would do anything that they, they want me to do, because it's because I know them and I know how uh, how smart they are. Driven to dead center field by Floyd and Pierre will run it down on the warning track. Another long shot by Floyd who homered mm. in the first inning. So he is one for two. Mike Piazza coming up next. All tied up here, one-one in the fourth inning. Matthew Broderick with us. And so I know the Mets wives are very much involved in the project as right. well. And we spoke with several of them earlier tonight. And it, it seems like one of those causes that affects people so deeply and so personally yeah well it's a you know it's a, a dreadful disease and it's not that uncommon it's always fatal um, it also uh, there are other diseases that are similar so the treatments would uh, would cross over into Parkinson's and Alzheimer's and all sorts of brain or spine disorders so it affects a lot of people but it's been, it's been how, how far along are they? I mean, there is there is so much more to know. If I, and I'm yeah. going from memory on this. I'm not. You know. I, I, I'm no expert about it, but but I know that you know stem cells. All the just a lot of the research seems to be going there, and also with gene therapy that's about to start this year. I think somebody's trying it for, for ALS. So there's a whole new world opening up to uh, to treatments. But it I mean, just started. For, I mean, for so long they've just had nothing. They had nothing. Had nothing. Zero. Absolutely nothing. Zip, not a nothing, right? That's right. But uh, it looks like now that you know that there is some some hopeful signs. I think. I hope so. <laughs> Jason Phillips hitting with the bases empty and two down. A tie game, one-one, between the Mets and the Marlins. Night number two in this series. 
and that is in there for a strike. Are you terribly busy right now? Are you, are you taking time out of a theater production or a movie or something right now? Uh, I'm, I'm terribly busy just getting to the ballpark. <laughs> that, that was, that, that was the, how busy my day was today. When should I leave for the ballpark? I'm, I'm not busy now. No, I'm just enjoying my, my time. And I've been watching uh, the Mets, which has been a lot of fun lately. The last week or so, it's been pretty good. Yeah, yeah. it's been very exciting. Yeah. Hey, look at, looking forward to seeing the movie, and I've seen it in trailers and, and promotions and whatnot. The Stepper, Stepford Wise film coming out? Yep, uh, June 11th. June 11th, and, and who's in it? I mean, it's right around the corner uh, there. Yeah. Nicole Kidman, Glenn Close, Bette Midler, Christopher Walken, John Lovitz, uh, Faith Hill. Faith Hill. Lenny Dykstra. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lenny. Len. But no, no, believe me, Faith Hill caught our attention there. Yeah. Is this her first motion picture? Yes, it is. Yeah. And she's uh, beautiful in it. She, she's, she did a great job. Terrific. Yeah. And the connection to her husband and then Tug McGraw being right, the son of, of Tug McGraw. So of it's, uh, you yeah. know. Yeah. She was here when, when Tug was here several times when he was visiting, when he was going through therapy, and et cetera, and suffering from the tumor that he had in his brain yeah. and ultimately took his life and his family was here she was very involved with you got up there Zeal there Tucker, is, yeah. I remember that faith year. and uh, Tim were around mm -hmm. the three two to Phillips swung on and filed away Matthew what's your first recollection of being a Mets fan or, or even just a baseball fan? Um, well when I was a pretty little kid I remember I was here and I saw, and I was sitting back here somewhere with my father, and I got a foul ball that uh, Lou Brock fouled something off that you might have thrown. I don't remember who was pitching. I think it was Kuzman. And uh, and I went home with a ball in my pocket. That just made me love the Mets. Yes, sir. That'll do it. Matthew yeah. Broderick, good night to believe to benefit Project ALS. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. Having you. Real pleasure. Thanks so much. Okay. Uh, I'll be in there next Good year, swinging away in a cage. We're tied at one. Okay. Fifth inning coming up, a 1-1 tie between the Marlins and the Mets. Tom Siever, Dave O'Brien with you. A nice chat with, nice visit with Matthew Broderick, talented actor and big Met fan. Swung on by Pavano, he lifts a fly ball into right, swinging at the very first pitch. And he is retired, one away. And a top, top class guy, a top class guy too, isn't he? Very, very nice gentleman. The Honda upcoming schedule now for the Mets tomorrow. It'll be Ginter on the mound and then lighter on Sunday last two games against the Marlins and then interleague play gets started against the Minnesota Twins followed by the Kansas City Royals. Now lighter coming off a strong performance as Juan Pierre gets ready to dig in he is singled and grounded out. Matthew a very unassuming guy and giving up a lot of his time there to a terrific project project ALS. The Met wives were also very much involved in it tonight and throughout the season. The, the one thing about what Matthew said, though, I think everybody assumes that anytime there was a foul ball or souvenir they got years ago when they were small kids at Shea Stadium, you must have been the guy to throw the pitch. You didn't throw every pitch. You didn't pitch every night. But everybody assumes that. It bothers me a little. I can tell. I can take take one of those relaxing. I things. don't know why, it just, but it's it's just it just, just, just a rubs some people the wrong way, doesn't it? Fastball outside, just missed the corner. Is it the O'Brien Irish that just comes to the forefront? Nice. I'm married to McIntyre now. Don't, I okay? know you did. Yeah. So I can I can get this at home too. By the <laughs> way, I don't need to get it from you. <laughs> don't need to fly 3,000 miles to get this, do you? <laughs> One, two, he reaches a roller to second. Wigginton on the charge, dumps it off in a hurry. Two down. The air one for three. And Tuesday at nine, catch a fresh episode of the WB. Luis Castillo over two. He's been doubled up on a ground ball to third, and he's fly to center. Outside ball one. Mike Lowell would hit next. But if you're Steve Traxel, you want to leave him right in the on deck area. Lowell with 14 home runs, which is tops on the Marlins. Castillo back into his number two slot. 
been a really good hitter and I think an underrated hitter four out of the last five years Luis Castillo has batted 300 or better. Two balls and one strike on him one run three hits for the Marlins one run on two hits for the Mets not playing in a big market underrated on both sides of the coin too by the way. I think you're right and defensively he could have won a gold glove there at second yeah. base a number He's, of times. He is a good little player. He has done that. He has won one. Goes the other way with a ground ball. Tough play. Zeal off balance. Throw. Scooped up and got him. Mike Piazza scoops another one. A marvelous play by Zeal while backing up. His momentum carrying him behind third. That awkward chuck, but in time to get him. Tom Seaver, Dave O'Brien. There we are, just hanging on the wall here at Shea. <laughs> Which one is you? Which one's me? Yeah, God, you got the line out before. Come on, the which one is going it? there? I think was going to say which one. <laughs> are you on the? Are you the left hander or the right hander? Well, there? you're going to be the one on the left. That's a little taller. You got far too many wrinkles on that neck, big yeah. boy. Thanks a lot. Take a look at this last play. Get it in the air and fire with all your might. And a good call by the first base up first base umpire, Ed Rapiano. I thought he was safe at first base, and they're still giggling over there. I didn't hurt your hand, did I? Huh? <laughs> hey, Mike, you got a bruise on the hand from that throw over there and a nice pick out by Mike Piazza. No, it's okay. I got you covered, kid. Oh, boy. The old veterans. That's a couple of nice scoops at the bag for Piazza. Digging it out of the dirt. Kareem Garcia, 0 for 1 tonight. He's grounded out to short. This game tied up 1 1 here at the midway point on a Friday night at Shea, where the Mets have won four straight. Had a chance to be two games over 500 with a victory tonight. Now on hammer to left field. Nunez with some room though to make the catch. One man out in inning number five. Here's a look at the Dodge trivia question. Coming at you since 1970, which five Mets have hit three home runs in a game? Since 1970, five have done it. Somebody just gave me the answer, and that's not right. I wanted the opportunity to guess, but let's say Gary Carter is somewhere on the list. I think there's a very good chance. We saw McReynolds. What do you think? Strawberry did it, right? Alfonso. Edgardo Alfonso on that list. We're getting there. No, I, don't, I don't think so. That's cruel and unusual. Piazza. Well, they're putting all the potentials out there. At least they're not just stopping at three and so they, we know we've got the answer. They're giving us all the possible. Lighter is not on there. Kuzman is not on there. Rake, but snatched by Lowell. A fine play, a long throw, and he gets it. Mike Lowell on one big hop. That's how you're going to get Ty Wigginton these days, though. It's a ball right on the button again, and a big hang with him from the opposing dugout. And nice play at third base. Kudos to your third baseman, Pickett Nick at third. Look at the hands. Yes, they're hands. Not enough time to get your body in front of it. Probably don't want to do that anyway. But feeling it from bottom up. Hands come a lot faster when they're going up than going down. That's an excellent play. Mike Cameron called out on a third strike in the second inning. One of three strikeouts so far from Carl Pavano. Two down in the fifth, a 1 1 tie. Off the middle, base hit out of the reach of Castillo, and off into center field, a single from Mike Cameron, who is now one for two. That's amazing. We're going to hit the ball right on the button, right at the third baseman. Cameron gets jammed, may have broken his bat, and hits a little flare, gets a base hit. No justice in the ball game. Mike Cameron's going to say, "Tough luck, I'll take it. I need the base hits. I want the base hits. I hit enough line drives right at somebody." Tracks a low for one. He's grounded back to the pitcher. What a nice defensive plays in this game on both sides, haven't there been? There have been indeed, and we just saw one from Zeal moments ago over at third base. Traxel has made one as well, coming off the mound, pouncing on that topper. Routine ground ball to easily. He's going to have to go to first base with it. Side retired, no runs, one hit, and one man left. Making pizza here at Shea. 
And through five, we're tied up at one. Tracks are locked up in a 1 1 pitcher's duel so far with Carl Pavano. Mayor Bloomberg is here tonight taking in the Red Hot Mets, trying for their fifth straight win. And trying to make it two in a row here over the Florida Marlins, the defending world champs. Each side with three hits, so not a whole lot of offense yet. Lowell is over two. He's fly to left and grounded to second. So far, he is hitless in the series. Traxel with a lot of sink on his fastball tonight as that one dips away for ball one. Mets starting pitching the staff period over the last four games now allowing a total of nine runs coming into tonight. So the pitching has been awfully good and enough offense to win four in a row slap foul by Lowell. Been so very strong against the Marlins again last night in six innings allowing just three hits and the combination of Stanton and then Braden Looper shutting down the Marlins the rest of the way. The one one pitch inside there's no question to me that Steve Traxel's tempo is sped up this year they've got him to work a little bit faster to help his defense stay alive. Used to be at times painfully slow, especially with runners on base. This tempo is a little bit better. If you, if you throw strikes, have a fairly quick tempo, you're going to get better defense played behind you. But he is a creature of habit. It's tough to change those kinds of habits, but I think Rick Peterson has finally gotten to him. Just, just step it up, just step the pace up, just a fraction. A beautiful breaking ball right there. You're behind an account. You're looking fastball. Three and one. What do you look for? Looking fastball. Dead fastball. Whoops. Breaking ball. Strike. All you gotta do is get it over. Low for ball four. So low walks for the third time in the series. This one beginning the sixth inning. Trivia time now. Brought to you by Dodge. And since 1970, which five Mets have hit three home runs in a game? And I think we visually gave you a pretty good idea what the answer may be. He did not show you Dave Kingman, of course. Alfonso Carter and, of course, Daryl Strawberry in 1985. Adele Washington, one of them in 1980. Wow. Bit of a surprise. So far, a perfect night for this young man, Miguel Cabrera. He is single and he's doubled. That makes him six for ten lifetime against Steve Traxel. So the right hander had better be careful here in a one one tie. That is in there for a strike. Traxel has walked four including moments ago Mike Lowell. And of course you mentioned Traxel may be perceptibly quicker to the plate with men on base than a year ago but it is still a ponderous pace when men are on high fly but fouled on a right field line you can see some of the power of Miguel Cabrera who's hit 13 home runs going the other way short of the wall there but gets great lift on it nothing in two you know, and Part of that too, I think it's logic in the sense you have to balance who's at first base. Mike Lowell's at first base. And Mike Lowell's got three stolen bases here this year. Thrown out one time. Last year, Lowell struck out three bases. The year before that, four. The year before that, one. Is he going to run? Probably not. Not with Cabrera at the plate. And he will spend an inordinate amount of time. There's nothing wrong to make sure that he's over. But as long as he doesn't get a walking lead, you're in good shapes. You're in good shape. No problem. The other thing about what Strax has done, which is good here to Cabrera, he's got a head ahead of him. Because most young players are fastball hitters. They have not learned how to hit the breaking ball. And Greg quickly 0 and 2. Boy, so now he's, he shouldn't have in his mind right now. I want to get him out on either this pitch or the next pitch. Certainly don't want to go 3 and 2. But I want to get him out with my breaking ball and on this pitch or at the at the 2 2 count and get the breaking ball over. Well before he let him go on the walk he did throw a 3 1 curveball on Lowell that one fouled away was not going to give in to Lowell. I mean Lowell's hit third for a reason. 
Talking about a guy who's lights out, hit the home run, and turned Brayton Looper's fastball right around in that last game down there in Florida. I'm going to rock it in the left field seats. Look, good power here throughout this part of the order. You get Lowell with 14, Cabrera with 13, Esop Choi with 11. So they can all hit the ball out of the ballpark. Here's the one two pitch. Swing and a drive, left center field, racing back Cameron on his horse, hits over his head and off the base of the fence. Lowell heading into third, and Cabrera into second with a stand up double. Two men in scoring position with nobody out, and Traxel is in some trouble here in the sixth. Did I hear you say earlier in this broadcast that the Florida Marlins like this guy's bat? A little bit, yes. Did you see that ball pop off that bat? I mean, that's a line drive against a center fielder that can really fly. Look at contact and just driving that ball out to, and not really even in the gap, but simply over to the head of Mike Cameron in center field. So Cabrera, three for three in the game, and five total base, couple of doubles and a single. And seven out of 11 now against Traxel, and it's a small sample. It's only 11 at bats, but I think you see a dangerous trend there for Steve Traxel. So two men aboard. The batter, he stopped Choi. He's gone 0 for 1. And then the biggest thing I've seen as far as Miguel Cabrera before the double that he had in the fourth inning, Traxel threw him that splitter. Came in, up, but almost looked like he was going to hit him in the knee, and he fouled it off. He had the presence enough to foul off a real tough pitch. Keep himself alive till he get a pitch to drive. He got it in the fourth inning. He certainly got a very, very hittable pitch there. Up high around the chin if he's up, Joy, for ball one. Good pitch right there. You may want to get him out of way. Go back up and push him, push his nose back off. There's nothing wrong with that. That's good pitch. That ball is not that far out of the strike zone. That's one thing that a lot of pitchers do not do these days because of. Well, they were really prohibited to throw it inside, way in off the plate. Really by the umpires. Joy, a fly ball hitter, lifts this one to center field. Cameron measures it. Lowell does not run well. Here's Cameron's throw. It comes all the way in. A play at the plate, but he's in there safely. And the Marlins take the lead. Aesop Choi with his 28th run batted in. And Cabrera went from second to third on it. Okay, it was hit off the end of the bat. Yep, a splitter. On the left side of Mike Cameron, see how he tries to get on the other side of the ball and take it on the right side of his body. Misses the cutoff, man. So the Mets don't get another out here. Cabrera is going to tag up at second and go to third. And if you feel like you can't get the runner at home, you got to hit the cutoff man and get the runner at third. But just not enough steam on the ball to get low going in. A good slide by him. He goes by Phillips and goes back with his hand. And that gives the Barnes a two to one lead. Infield in for the Mets. Damian Easley, the hitter, is flying to center and he's walked tonight. In the dirt, ball one. The Pirates beat the Cubs two to one the final. And that was the return of Mark Pryor for the Chicago Cubs. And he was very sharp today. In fact, he had a one to nothing lead when he left after six. He threw 85 pitches, 55 for strikes. But the bullpen coughed it up. It's been a problem lately for the Cubs, and Pittsburgh pulled it out two to one. And what, did he, what did he have? Eight strikeouts and in six innings, or something like went that. Went six innings today, struck out eight. Yep. A little low for a ball, two and nothing. And again, over the last couple of innings, Traxel has been in and out with his command, as opposed to the first three, where he really was firing strike one on a consistent basis. It was pretty well zipping through the first three innings. Swing shot to left field. Floyd backing up. That sails over his head. That caroms up against the fence. Cabrera is in. And it's a double for Easley. Another run across to make it three to one Florida. Well, you knew something lucky had to happen for Traxel to get out of this inning with only one run having been scored. Now two halves. And the Marlins are getting some pretty good swings off the right hander, which has not happened very often at home for Traxel this year. Looked like a hanger. That really up right about eye level. And you could see the hitter, Damian Easley. He, he almost wound up on that pitch. You saw it. Brought before went break. Look at this. He had, I mean, that is hammered right there. Mechanics perfect. Right on the ball. Eyes right on the ball. 
Uh, they are hitting the ball pretty hard off of Steve Traxel tonight. Trax came in with an ERA at home of 1.11. So tonight, out of character, the way he's been pitching here at Shea, 86 pitches. And that's just too close strikes and balls, 49 strikes. Well, that certainly is not the way he has been pitching here this year. When you come in and you have a home field earned run average of 1.11, that is not the ratio that you have. We've seen Steve make a lot of mistakes tonight with his stuff up, breaking ball up. I don't remember a pitcher ever went 20 and 0. He well, Marino really, warming up in the bullpen. Yeah, he has really pitched well for the Mets this year. Well, remember, Traxel started this inning by walking Mike Lowell. He has come in to score. Cabrera doubled. He's now scored. And Steve has walked four men tonight. He has not been able to get that guy out. Cabrera three for three. Easily now at second after his run scoring double. And the batter will be Mike Redman, who has walked and driven in a run with a sacrifice fly. Three to one, Florida in the sixth. And Traxel's first one is wailed at foul toward his own dugout for strike one. Well, the first inning, Traxel allowed a leadoff single to Juan Pierre. Nothing came of that. Cabrera's single to begin the second inning. Nothing came of that. And in this inning, a walk and a double. To start the inning, both of those runs score, and that one ripped into center field for a base hit. Easily into third, they put on the brakes there. The throw cut off by Zeal back into first, not in time to get Redmond. Easily holding up at third, and the hits just keep on coming. It's the third in the inning now. Off Traxel, they're on at first and third. Well, another ball hit right on the button. The question is, will Arnell leave him in to take a chance? You don't want to give up another run. You're down by two. And. Cabrera hit the ball right on the button. Easily did, and Redmond. Easily no chance to score. Jeff Cox, the third base umpire, third base coach, excuse me. And rightfully so. Cameron in center field got to that ball very quickly. Art Howell looking like he wants to get out of that dugout. As Nunez gets in, he's not going to. At least not yet. The pitcher is on deck. One man out. So Traxel is a double play away from getting out of the inning. First pitch across for strike one as he catches the outside corner. Pavano 0 for 2. As is the man in the box, Abraham Nunez. But Nunez, despite the fact that he is not homer, does have very good power. Two runs in in this inning for the Marlins have taken a three to one lead. Traxel very deliberate here comes to a stop. In another case of a Florida Marlins runner who has virtually no speed in Mike Redmond. Traxel trying to make sure that double play ball is still in order but Redmond. Is absolutely no threat to go. Off the corner, one and one. Same two clubs tomorrow. The ball game beginning at 120. And then the series wraps up on Sunday at 110. And interleague play is right around the corner. Series upcoming with the Minnesota Twins next week. That's outside for a ball, two and one. And after that, the Kansas City Royals. The Royals right now at 19 and 32, the second worst record in baseball. Though they have an early lead against Boston. The Twins also have not been playing very well, so there's a serious opportunity here for the Mets if they can keep this winning streak rolling. Cut on and missed by Nunez. He chased a diving pitch outside the zone, and it's two and two. Ahead in the count, and that's not the kind of swing you want to see if you're a manager of a ball club when you're ahead in the count. 
Last time up, Nunez had a runner on third base, two outs, and tried to bump the ball with a pitcher in the on deck circle. Growing pains in certain spots with this ball club. You got Cabrera, the way he ran the bases early, the Nunez is approaching with two outs and a man on third. Or Jack McKeon is also, I mean, that's where he. There he's going to take advantage of being able to teach these young players how to play the game. Well, at 73, he has a lifetime of experience. The 2-2 pitch, lunging little looper, that's going to find a home in left field and drive in another run. Easily will score. Redmond is around second and sliding into third. It's an RBI single for Nunez. That makes it four to one, and that will do it for Traxel. He's allowed three consecutive hits. Nunez going after another one outside, knocking it the other way, and that will do it. Moreno is coming on this call to the bullpen brought to you by Verizon. Make progress every day. We'll be back. Our Toyota line score sees the Florida Marlins in front of the New York Mets 4 to 1. Steve Traxel lifted after a rough sixth inning. He gets only one out and walks a man while allowing four hits. And three runs to score. He gives way to Orber Moreno coming in with a 342 ERA, 21 strikeouts in 23 and two thirds for the right hander. Runners on at first and third for the Marlins. And Pavano will hit for himself at 143 with a homer. Traxel threw 93 pitches, 54 for strikes. And this inning and the second inning, the innings that wore him out, he threw 24 pitches in the second inning, 23 before getting the hook in this frame. Pavano indicating bunt, Zeal charging from third, and it's bunted foul for strike one. Jack McKeon really likes when he has Carl Pavano on the mound, and he's four and two with a 3.57 ERA. That's not too bad, but. The Marlins are eight and two in his starts, so it tends to go well when the right-hander from New Britain, Connecticut, is on the mound. So the Mets will have to come from behind here tonight as they trail by three, and the Marlins looking for more, only one out. And the fake, the double fake, nobody biting here. You just turn around. And score off early. Say, listen, I'm butting the ball for a sacrifice. We're not going to squeeze bump. The runner on third, runner on first. Jack McKeon trying to stay out of the double play. Trying to move another man into scoring position with your pitcher. Drops down the bunt, back toward the hill. Moreno goes to first. The sacrifice successful. Nunez into second base. Nicely done. He had a chance at second base and just pretty much gave it a glance. Good bunt right here by Pavano. Keeps a bad head against the, uh, above the ball. And that's a nice bunt. Make the fielder pitch it. And you got a chance at second base. Yeah. If you come up fire and thinking second base, you might get a double play out of that. It had been close, but look where the pitcher is. Almost like you're going to get the out at first anyway. I think definitely had a chance at it. I do too. It's being aggressive off that mound and thinking to until you. Uh, part of it, relief pitchers do not get the innings pitch and the number of chances to get the feel for that, knowing speed of your runners, etc. Here's Juan Pierre. He lost one foul out of place. Got one for three with a single, and a couple of ground ball outs to second. A base hit here would score two. So this is the hitter of the night from the New York Mets standpoint for that matter for the Marlins as they try and take a six to one lead. On the edge of the plate for a called strike and it's 0 and 2. The air strikes out very, very rarely. The 0 2. Broken bat back to the hill. Moreno handles it, and the sign is retired. In the inning, the Marlins score three times on a total of four hits, and they take a 4 to 1 lead over the last seven of the sixth inning, and the Mets with some ground to make up. They trail by three. 
with Kaz Matsui to start it off, then Tanzil and Cliff Floyd against the right hander Carl Pavano. The Marlins just scored three times to knock Traxel out of the game. First pitch wide for ball one and Matsui's fly to center and struck out looking. Popped up, but they'll twist back out of play. Kaz has hit safely in six out of his last seven games. And sitting there with five home runs. Traxel having just surrendered the three runs, so we'll see if the Mets can jump right back in it here at Shea, the 1 1 pitch. Ground ball the other way to base hit. And a good start, softly hit, but he nudged it through. And Matsui is 1 for 3. So well, he really knows how to hit. He sees that ball away. All I got to do just lay it on the ground over there where the third baseman playing up, lows up by the grass. And if I get it, if I just get the ball on the ground right there, yep, single. Down by three runs, get yourself on base. Nifty little piece of hitting right there by Kaz Matsui. Zeal 0 for 2. He's flying to left and to right. We've talked about this season a lot the fact that Zeal has appeared with 11 major league teams. He's going to have a uniform from each one of those clubs displayed under glass at the House of Thousand Oaks, California when it's all over at the end of the season. But this note really puts it in perspective. When this series ends on Sunday, for the last 18 games, Zeal would have played exclusively against teams he once played for. Over 18 games. The Cardinals, Colorado, the Phillies, and the Marlins. He wore all of those uniforms. And many more as he looks at a strike. Plus, I mean, looking ahead, the Mets are going to play 28 games in July. 22 of those teams, Todd Zeal, I mean, 22 of those games against teams that he used to draw a paycheck from almost the entire month. Matsui back in. Pavano, an easy guy to run on. He's never had a terrific move to first. He's never really done a good job holding base runners. He's probably the easiest guy in their staff to steal against. Not a big lead, and here's the 1 1 pitch. He's not going, and a breaking ball drops in for strike. Talking about zeal and uniform, take a look at that breaking ball again, and it's a beauty by Pavano. Yeah, that's perfect. Down. On the outer half of the plate. I just look at you talking about all the teams that zeal has played for. How many are going to be in there twice where he's had two tours of duty? I thought I'm sure would there, I'm sure there would be more than one. And if I read this correctly, and I'm going to give it to you, see so if you correct my investigative powers here. Mets are the only ones that he has played for twice in his career. Out of on the two, 11. On two right. tours of duty. Talking about two tours of duty. We're talking about 11 different teams. Yep. The runner holding and it's dribbled foul. And if you do, I'm talking about 11 teams. And this is interesting because if you get a foul ball here, we'll throw them out there. St. Louis, Cardinals, Chicago, Cubs, Philadelphia. Play for Baltimore. I don't remember that. Los Angeles, Florida, Texas. The Mets in two years for 2000 2009. Colorado, then the Yankees, Montreal, and then this year back in the And only the, only the Mets twice out of all those. Only the Mets back to back tour, I mean, not back to back, but at least two tours of duty. The 1 2 pitch. Ground ball shot at the middle, snuffed out by Castillo to easily one on the first double play. Brilliantly turned by the Florida Marlins up the middle. Castillo to easily to Choi. That had a ticket for center field. Well, it just doesn't get any better than this as far as defense. And you're talking about a pitcher tipping his hat, especially when you got Zeal running, tipping your hat to the defense. You see that kind of play? I don't care if you hit 200. This is normal speed right here. Hit right on the button. 
by Zeal. And no chance. I mean, hit right on the button. No chance for Matsui to get there and break it up at second. What a play at second. That's as good as you're going to see. Floyd swing at the first pitch. Skies one to left, but not deep. And Nunez there. The side is retired. The play of the night turned in up the middle by the Marlins. Only three batters come to bat here for the Mets. Let's take a look at the Toyota out of town scores in the National League. We talked about Mark Pryor. Six shutout innings for the Cubs. His return to the rotation, but they lose. Their bullpen coughs it up, and the Pirates beat the Cubs. Cincinnati, Montreal going at it. Adam Dunn with a two run homer. Bobby Abreu has hit a two run homer as well for Philadelphia. In the American League, Alfonso Soriano with a three run homer. First game back to Yankee Stadium. There have been seven home runs hit in that Yankees Rangers game, five of them by the Yankees. Castillo up the middle, a bounding ball. Matsui with it, zips it over there. Castillo just made that brilliant play moments ago. He won a gold glove last year, flashing that here inside Shea tonight. So one man out, Mike Lowell the batter. He's gone 0 for 2 with a walk and a run scored. Lowell started the evening never very fond of Shea Stadium, the former New York Yankee farmhand, just 214 lifetime here at Big Shea. And he takes the fastball low. Coming into play tonight, the Yankees with a two and a half game lead over the Red Sox. Deep fly into left field, but Floyd backs up a little bit and there for the cash to retire his former teammate. Two up and two down. Must have jammed him a little bit. You know, Mike Lowell hits that ball in the air like that. I think the ball is going to get to the warning track at least. I thought that had a chance for the first split second and all of a sudden it dies and see if the sinker came up the bat. Yep, had to collapse a little bit. Actually hit it on a pretty good part of the bat, but had to collapse his arms. And hit just the underside of the ball. Here's Cabrera so far perfect. He's three for three, two doubles and a single. All of that came off Steve Traxel, who lasted five and a third innings. Gave up four runs, seven hits. Traxel also walking four. The White Sox have a two game lead over Minnesota in the American League Central. Anaheim, despite all those injuries, still leading Texas by three. In the American League West. That is too low, and he got 2 0. The Marlins with a two game lead over the Phillies. Atlanta, two and a half out, as are the Mets. In the Central, Cincinnati still cooking along. They have the best record in the National League, Cincinnati does, and a two game lead over St. Louis. And they have Sean Casey. Making a run at 400. Top hitter in baseball. It was what 391 coming into the day? He said, Talk to me in September. I don't hear about it. Although it would be interesting in September if, he, if we were chatting about this. But he also says that players from other teams are rubbing up against them at an alarming rate. Some guys he doesn't even like. <laughs> well, they want some of that stuff he's got, whatever they, it is. They want the all those hits to rub off. He said, you know, Bagwell, you're touching him on the hands and the hips and the back of the shoulders, and everything. He said, you know, I really like Jeff Bagwell, but he's getting real close. He didn't want to date him. Is that what you're telling me? <laughs> I think that's the message. <laughs> Open some of that rubs off on him. He is just so hot. He doesn't get many infield hits either, does he? No, he doesn't get the leg hits. Well, neither did Ted Williams. Ted hit for good us. Point. You make a very good point. But Ted Williams is a guy who walked 125, 135 times. Casey does not take many walks at all. So it'll be fascinating to see how long he can go at this run at 400. He's not there yet. He's at 391 going into tonight. And Casey does use the entire field too. He will fire that left hand hitter. Will fire that ball down the left field line. Sure does. Cabrera on with ball four. He stopped Choi has also drawn a walk in this one. He swung a late foul, tipped it into the mid. A mechanical and late swing. You see the late kick. 
seem to lift. He tries to lift that ball. It looks very mechanical. Does it by the numbers? It, it's a swing in sections and yeah. pieces. Well, he's got some sock behind it. It's not a swing that reminds you of Willie Mays. You know, most left hand guys have beautiful swings. You could watch them swing the bat all day. Watch Cliff Floyd hit one out of the ballpark as he did earlier. Keith Hernandez had a beautiful swing. Keith did. Yeah, he had a beautiful it, swing. Jeremy Brunitz did not or does not. I mean, a guy with a very violent swing. But most left handers, it's a thing of beauty. Choi strikes out swinging. Side retired, one walk, one man left. Four to one, Florida. Mike Piazza swinging at the first pitch here at the bottom of the seventh, fouls it off to the right side. Mike looking for his 11th home run. He is one for two tonight. Carl Pavano staying on for his seventh inning. He's allowed the Mets only four hits. And Florida has a four to one lead. Really nothing flashy out of Pavano. He's not what you'd call a spectacular arm, but 92 93 with a fastball. Softly hit. Lowell on the charge. Gloves it smoothly and throws out Piazza. Very, very good defensive third baseman there. The Marlins have, and Mike Lowell one away. Here's our Jeep game summary. Traxel went five and a third. He gave up four earned runs. This is a guy who had a 111 ERA at home coming in. Cliff Floyd got the Mets off to a very nice start with a solo home run off Pavano in the first inning. But that's been it so far. Cabrera has three hits. And Pavano has been very solid. Good sinking fastball, a slider, and a changeup. And he's gotten Jason Phillips twice and a fielder's choice in the strikeout. And changes speeds a lot. You're talking about nothing that really opens your eyes as far as stuff goes. I mean, this isn't a he isn't a Beckett or Burnett that's firing the ball 95 miles an hour, but you know what he does? He changes speeds. Pretty good control, a little sink, a little forcing fastball, change speeds on this, change speeds on that. Line drive in the center. Pierre pulls up and plays it on a bounce. That brings a grin to his face because he thought he might have a chance to make that catch initially. I thought when he hit it, I thought he had a chance. Two pretty good center fielders in this ball game tonight for one for each club, obviously. Little hanging slider right there. Big swing by Phillips. And Juan Pierre. Uh, if he'd have busted, look at the reaction. I'd have busted to begin with, I'd have that ball. Uh, come on now, you know, four to one ball game, play it safe. Well, there was a little slip there. Yep. Pierre, he did back foot gave out just a little bit. Otherwise, maybe. So a little break there for the Mets. Phillips is on and his Garcia. Graham with a soft roller. Castillo will chase back the runner and not make a play at first base. He does get Phillips on the tag and they're two away. Yeah, as soon as you get the runner going back, backpedaling right there, you just feed it to first base, then you've got a rundown. So every week now, don't miss the award winning WB 11 News at 10 for the stories that matter to you. Jim. Watkins and Kaidi Tong come your way weeknights on the WB 11 News at 10. Here's that play again. You got Phillips at first base, and he's a dead duck. And the ball roll over to the second base. As soon as you get Phillips to do that, boom, get the out of first base. Because you're going to get Phillips in the rundown. And they just gave Garcia a time, you know, time enough to get to first base. Well, a bit of a quiet night so far for Ty Wigginson. He's 0 for 2. First ball swinging pops up. So Pavano will again make his way through an inning very quickly. Gives up one hit, one man is left. Tom and I will be back to Shea Stadium with a new friend. It is 4 to 1. Florida. Hey, Mets fans, you could win an unforgettable day at Shea. Just use your MasterCard card at a MetroCard vending machine from June 1st to June 30th, and you'll be automatically entered for a chance to win the MasterCard Unforgettable Day Sweepstakes. The grand prize winner will watch batting practice, take a behind the scenes tour of Shea Stadium, get great game tickets, and more. For more information, log on to Mets.com. Back at Shea, where it is 4 to 1 Florida, and kids lace up your running shoes for the Dynamets Dash on Sunday, June 6th. Weather permitting, you can run the bases here at Shea just like the Mets after the 110 game against the Marlins. For tickets, stop by Shea Stadium or Keysman Park. You can visit the Mets Clubhouse shops or call 718 507 TIXX or log on to Mets.com. 
Ricky Metallico coming out of the bullpen for New York. He's going to get six, seven, and eight for the Marlins. In Easley, Redmond, and Nunez here. And then we'll see if Carl Pavano stays in. No activity right now in the Marlins bullpen. And the Mets have not done too much tonight with a Florida right hander. As they've been held to five hits. And Scott Erickson trying to make his way back to the rotation. And his rehab didn't go all that well tonight. A total of six innings. He gave up eight hits and six earned runs. Only one walk and five strikeouts. It was tonight in Durham. First J. So pitching pretty well last night in the Mets victory, four to one over the Marlins here. Maybe in Easley. So the question becomes where to put him in that rotation. Metallico on in relief here. Steve Traxel went the first five and a third, and is on the hook for the loss. He gave up four runs on seven hits and walked four men. So he takes it to the top half of the eighth inning. It'll be Damian Easley. Leading things off, he came up with a double in the sixth inning, and that was when things unraveled for Traxel. In that frame, he walked the leadoff man Lowell, gave up a double to Cabrera. He saw Choi drove in a run with a sacrifice fly, then easily doubled. Redmond singled. Nunez singled in another run, and that was it for Steve tonight. Metallico's first pitch is outside ball one. The key words that you said about Traxel. Walk the first man on that end. It gets pounded into your head so often you become paranoid about it and say, well, oh, fair ball. Fair ball, long throw, and not nearly in time as easily as on with his second hit of the game. You walk that first man and you just set up a recipe for disaster. The catcher. And it gets Mike pounded Redmond. into you and pounded into your head. Zeal trying to airmail that ball over to Piazza. Looking for a little bit of magic again. Not with that speed going down the line. Redmond's had a good night at the plate. A walk, a sacrifice that drove in a run, and a single. Eight hits now for Florida. They've out hit the Mets eight to five. This is a pretty good hit and run tandem, these two. It'll be interesting to see what Jack McKeon does here. Are you going to sacrifice to get down to the number eight and nine spots in the in the order? Nobody in the bullpen for the Florida Marlins. Pavon is probably going to come out in the eighth inning. Runner holds and it's a strike. So that will lead you to believe potentially, yeah, hit and run. That might be the best thing offensively that he can do for his ball club. Redmond, excellent. Bat control, and he prefers to go to right field anyway. And there's a gaping hole over there with Piazza holding easily. Runner not going. He swung right through it, and now it's on two. Remember back in the fourth inning, had a runner on third base and one out. You can see the big long swing in front of the off-speed pitch. Redmond went after the very first pitch, fly ball to right field. Your point, he does like to go to right field, go to the right side, big hole. On the right side in the first and second baseman. Texas has tied up that game with the Yankees 6 6 there in the sixth inning. Last we checked, seven home runs had been hit in that game. Tampa Bay and Boston, excuse me, Tampa Bay and Baltimore tied up 5 5. Kansas City leading Boston 3 0 there in the fifth. Cut on and missed. He struck him out. So they never had a play on easily never broke towards second. Threw the ball right by him fastball in that outside corner beautiful Left pitch. Abraham Metallica. And the only two strikeouts in the game. That a Met pitcher has recorded have come over the last two innings. Moreno getting he saw Choi now Redmond fans against Metallico. Is Abraham Nunez he's popped up. Bunted to the pitcher for an out and singled in a run in the sixth inning. 
Pavano has come to the on deck area. I'm not sure about the wisdom of what Carl Pavano is doing. He does not have his helmet on in the on deck area. Are there photographers over there? <laughs> I don't know. Is that because the hitter who's left handed can foul the ball in his head? Or are there. It might be me. Call me crazy. But I think call, that's. Call, just, you know, I think that's tempting fate a little bit. That's in there for a call strike. I mean, it might be that his lovely girlfriend, the actress, very talented actress, Alyssa Milano, is somewhere how in the crowd. I, how did I know you were And she, she wanted how, to get how? a better look at, at her bow. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't want to look down the nose of romance by any means. Better to be safe, I think. Popped up, left field. Here comes Floyd near the line. Matsui went out too, but Cliff Floyd, plenty of time to get there. Easily scampers back to first. Out number two. Bovano has the hat on now. The pitcher. And he has a four to one lead. He looked back in the dugout at Jack McKeon, wondered if he was going to hit, and there was nobody thrown in that dugout. I mean, in the bullpen for the Marlins. One thing about the Florida Marlins, you certainly got to be aware of, is Armando Benitez in the bullpen, who has not pitched, I guess, since last Sunday. First pitch in the dirt for ball one. Well, Benitez has been just exceptional. A league leading ERA, a major league leading ERA of 0 0.30. Although the Marlins bullpen cautionary for them has been awful lately. That's what's been costing them games and it's the big reason they've lost four straight. And that's why Pavano is hitting right here too by the way. Give me eight innings and then I'll go to the bullpen if I can get Benitez but it's those setup men. Been going on down there those setup men but. Jack McKeon is trying to figure out on his pitching staff. 2 nothing pitch is in there for strike. Florida with a two game lead over Philadelphia in the East. Atlanta and the Mets tied next to two and a half back. Line drive caught by Wigginton and that's the inning. One hit one man left. Starting to get late here at Shea. We're going to the bottom half of the eighth four to one Florida. Direct from Tinseltown. Experiencing a little bit of controversy, maybe for the first time since Jack McCain took over the ball club in May of last year. The comments of the ace right hander Beckett saying that he never expected to go on the disabled list, even though he came up with that blister, a blister that landed him on the disabled list three times a couple of years ago. But he blasted the team trainer, calling him an idiot. And yet he's on the disabled list for 15 days because of the blister. A.J. Burnett also drawing the ire of management a little bit for saying that he did not want to make his first start back in the big leagues after Tommy John surgery on the road. A line shot, but Pierre makes the catch to retire Mike Cameron. One down in the bottom of the eighth. Jack McKeon scrawling on the clubhouse here at Shea Stadium, the visiting clubhouse. Your attention, please. Visiting Yesterday, please. leave your egos at the door. We won the championship with 25 men last year. So serving a pretty stern message to his team, basically to shut up and play. I've been doing that tonight. Here's Eric Valent hitting 278. He pinch hits, three homers, 10 runs batted in. Dontrell Willis, who's really been up and down this year in terms of his command. Although he's never been a problem in terms of slashing away verbally at management, Benita is starting to get ready in the bullpen for the Marlins. This is not a good development for the New York Mets. Up and away on Valent. Two balls, one strike. One out, base is empty. Four to one, Florida leads in the eighth inning. Line drive. Nunez dives. He makes the catch. May have hurt himself, too. I believe he did. He is shaken up. 
Abraham Nunez with a terrific play on a sinking line drive. Pierre is calling for the trainer. And now everyone else coming out to attend to Nunez. Holding his stomach area, maybe the ribs. Let's take another look. That's really a good play in left field by Nunez. He knocked the wind out of himself. That ball came up something either. Right at the bottom of the lungs or in his stomach, one of the two. That's a fine play right there. Robin Eric Pellet of a base hit. Oh, immediately grabbed that stomach. He's going to stay in there, though. Yeah. Going back to left field. Take a look at it again. This is normal speed right here. Did not think he had a chance at all catching that ball. Outstanding play in left field. Well, well enough to remain in the contest. So two line drives hit pretty hard, but both of them into the gloves of a Florida Marlin. And here's Kaz Matsui. He's gone one for three. Two down in the eighth. Four runs on eight hits for Florida. One run on five hits for the Mets. The big inning for the Marlins was the sixth. They scored three times and knocked Traxel out. A walk, two doubles, two singles, and three runs were in. Until that inning, the score was tied 1 1. Fouled off by Kaz. Kaz Matsui still trying to go to that left side. Mike Lowell is up on the grass at third base. Remember the last time up, Lowell was up there, and he, I mean, the Matsui was up with Lowell on the grass at third. He just like rolled the ball right between the shortstop and the third baseman. And with two strikes, he goes back. Well, oh, that's going to be a base hit right there. Got off the bare hand of Pavano as he slows it down. It winds up an infield hit for Kaz Matsui. Don't know if Damon Easley would ever been able to make that play with the, the speed of Kaz Matsui. Brian Rosenthal, the pitching coach, and the trainer come out. They'll check Pavano. It's an instinctive reaction. You got to. Can't say you've got to let that go, but you, your body is making a reaction faster than your brain could think. You no, know, I was stupid, and I know I am, and I'm not hurt. I'm okay. I didn't break a fingernail. I want you to get up now. Yeah, a couple outs. I'd like to get one more and just turn the ninth over to Benitez, I would think. I the base hit right here for a Kaz Matsui. Stick your head out and yell. Best shot of making that play easily was the shortstop. Well, here's Zeal, who's been the hero throughout the week. 0 for 3 so far tonight. And he is 0 for 7 in the series. He has a runner at first. And two men out. The runner goes. The pitch low. The throw is off target, and Matsui has it stolen. Paying attention to the runner at first base because it's really academic. And if there's an advantage here, what happens in a game when you're up by three runs, you almost want your first baseman playing back anyway. It doesn't make any difference. Matsui with eight stolen bases. He's been caught three times. Here comes McKeon. The Marlins do have activity in their bullpen for the first time tonight. And here he comes. Armando Benitez will be called on to pitch here with two down in the eighth. The call to the bullpen brought to you by Verizon. Make progress every day. And we'll be back in a moment. Benitez about to deliver a 1 0 pitch. And the fastball is high. Armando Benitez not remembered. In a warm, loving embrace by the fans at Shea Stadium, lustily booed all the time he ran in from the bullpen and all through his warm-up pitches, and now even louder as the count goes to 2-0 on Zeal. Runner at second, two out. He drills in the fastball for strike. Zeal hitless tonight. As Benitez is back on the mound here at Shea wearing an enemy uniform and thoroughly treated like an enemy by the Shea faithful. Popped up. 
Choi sees it right along the first base line, and in fair territory, he's got it. Benitez gets his man. We have completed eight innings, and the Marlins still lead it four to one. Top nine at Shea, the Marlins with a three run advantage. And Mets fans, on Friday, June 25th, the Mets are heading to the Bronx for a crosstown showdown with the Yankees. Catch every memorable minute right here on the WB11. A Rod Jeter, Mike Cliff, and the Battle of Matsui's Mets Yankees, June 25 at 7 on the WB11. Tom Seaver, Dave O'Brien with you from Shea Stadium. Four runs on eight hits for the Marlins, one run, six hits for the Mets. New York has not scored since the first inning. And a solo home run by Cliff Floyd. Here's John Franco coming out of the pen and working to the top of the order in the top of the ninth. And the Marlins trying to stop a four game losing skid. The Mets looking to keep alive their winning streak. Trying to make it run to five, but will have to come from behind to do it. Pierre on the night is one for four, a single, and then three ground ball outs in succession. Now usually one of the keys to beating Florida is keeping these jackrabbits off the bases in Pierre and Castillo. However they bat. Fly ball left center but right at Mike Cameron into the alley a few strides to make the catch. One down the Toyota scoreboard now as we look at the National League the Pirates defeating the Chicago Cubs two to one but Mark Pryor did pitch today and pitched very well six innings he had no decision. The Phillies have a lead on Atlanta Montreal leading Cincinnati at the moment. The American League that's a wild one the Yankees in Texas seven to six in the seventh inning. Kansas City leading Boston in the fifth. Here's Luis Castillo. Now last night the Mets did very good work. In winning the opener of the series and keeping Castillo and Pierre off the bases. Luis Castillo one for four. Pierre was 0 for four. Up the middle, down to knock it down Wigginton. He would have had no play anyway, even if he scooped it up cleanly on the speedy Castillo. Well, he knocks it down. You're exactly right. No chance to get Castillo. Too much speed going down the line at first base. So he is one for five on the night. Johnny Franco. The old folks of the ball club, you see Castillo, a little visit with Piazza. Franco making his 24th appearance in the ball game for the Mets. Who would have thunk it, right? Stanton has 32 appearances, and Looper 26. So the senior gentleman, John Franco, right back in the middle of the action. He's been very durable in his career, and at that advanced grandfatherly age. In great state shape and still throwing well. The pitch to Lowell is down low and he got two and nothing. Lowell is over three but he walked and scored in the sixth inning. That guy right there has done plenty of damage tonight. Cabrera with three hits and a walk so the Mets have yet to retire him. Well, you're talking about the top of the number one and number two spots in this lineup have been pretty quiet tonight. Well, the other point you made, David, was that three, four, and five can hurt you too, and they have done it tonight. They've gotten on base. They got on base for the number seven spot hitter, Redmond. And Nunez drove in a run, but they they got on front of damage really came in the heart of the lineup here this evening against Traxel. Yeah, Pierre and Castillo haven't done a whole lot tonight. It combined two for ten. That hasn't been the trouble. The right it was the heart of that order Cabrera. in the sixth inning. A walk, a double, sack fly for a run, a double for another run, a single and a single. And all of a sudden there were three runs up on the board and the game was getting away. Now yeah. runners at first and second. And Castillo, one of the biggest plays of the ball game, too, is that you're gonna forget. A lot of people forget with a man on. And Piazza just come up four to one ball game as a double play turn. Castillo running the throw the tag and he's safe he got underneath it. So a stolen base for Luis Castillo. Good play the element of surprise right there. 
A stolen base number nine by Castillo. Zeal thought he had him. Oh boy, that was close. And the tag made high on the back, and so the third base umpire, Alfonso Marquez, said, "Nope, safe." Yep, he was safe. Just got there. Close play. First and third, one down. And a count of one and zero oh on Cabrera, who singled in the second, doubled in the fourth, doubled in the sixth. His batting average just under 300 now, 296. I think you can see with Cabrera's ability to go the other way with a pitch, which he's getting better and better at. Take that to right field on occasion. He could hit 300 just about every year. And with power. And power to the opposite field. And he's just a baby. He's 21 years old. Look at the face. Baby face he is. Oh, he's become a heartthrob down in Little Havana. Lines that one to right deep. Backing up Garcia. He's got it. But here comes Castillo. After that steal of third, he comes on in to score. That makes it 5-1. to one. There's some of that opposite field power. Cabrera picking up the RBI and a 39 for him. Hard to right field and a sacrifice. All right, boys. Head right down on the ball. Doesn't pull off. This is what you were talking about before, before not pulling everything. And he went that way, gets himself an RBI. Number 39 of the year for Cabrera. Boys, I'm talking about a good night. How about Cabrera's night? Single, double, double, base on balls and sacrifice fly. Have fun having coffee in the morning reading that box score. He's up Choi, the batter now. He struck out his last time. He fouls that one away. Choi has gone 0 for 2 officially with a sack fly and a walk. Mike Lowell chatting up the all star buddy there, Mike Piazza. Dan Wheeler throwing in the bullpen for the second time tonight. A five to one Marlin lead now in the ninth. The only final in baseball today the Pirates beating the Cubs two to one. Although good news for Chicago Pryor is back. Pitched very well today eight strikeouts in six innings. He left ahead one to nothing. They have gone to the ninth inning Cincinnati and Montreal Montreal about to beat the Reds. In fact that's in the bottom of the ninth Montreal leads at four to two. The pitch to Choi he takes it outside. I was in Chicago earlier in the week I'll tell you what the Cubs are a little bit concerned about Sammy Sosa's very slow progress back from his back injury. He has done next to nothing the last couple of weeks. On the corner for strike three. The side is retired, but a run scores. Franco gives up a run here in the ninth. The Marlins bolster the lead to five to one. It'll be Floyd Piazza and Phillips coming up. With the here we go to the last half of the ninth inning. The Mets needing four to tie against Armando Benitez. Floyd takes the fastball for a strike. Cliff started the night in fine fashion with a home run in the first inning. He is one for three. The Mets have not scored since. Piazza next and then Phillips. Floyd is 0 for 8 lifetime against Armando Benitez. One ball and one strike. It's supposed to be Floyd, Piazza, and Phillips this inning. Yes, they are, sir. They are 0 for 13. <laughs> to extend on your 0 for 8. You can drop down the next season. I was so getting to that. But no. <laughs> no, either way you cut it, it's an offer. Offer. Offer for the three, four, five spots in the Met lineup against Benito. Popped up, back out of play, pretty and good, it's one and two. Pretty good swing right there on that fastball. Just a little bit late. Just a tad late. Got hit the back, got behind his back hip, or off his back hip. Now we saw him do this in the first inning where he was late. He turned the dial up and turned that Pavano fastball around for a home run in the very first inning. 
Benitez with a one two. Busted the bat into Castillo up and over. One down. So that's a bad night for Floyd as far as that particular First bat is concerned. A soft roller to second, and he loses the bat as well. Yeah, this pitch on the outside part of the plate, tailing away, down and away. And out there, try to keep himself alive. So that has gone for that triumvirate, 0 for 14 now against Benitez. Mike Piazza, 1 for 3 in the contest, a single in the first inning. Mike hitting around 350 his last 20 games. Takes the fastball for ball one. Mike 0 for 3 lifetime against the man he used to catch. Right through the middle. It's one and one. One down, base is empty. Popped up, first base side, but that'll twist out of play. You know, David, going back and looking at these Elias notes, it said there's nobody in uniform for the Mets tonight that's ever gotten a base hit off of me. Mo Vaughn hit one for three against him. Mo is not in uniform tonight. Cameron is 0 for 3. Floyd is now 0 for 9. Kareem Garcia 0 for 2. Phillips 0 for 2. Piazza 0 for 3. Spencer 0 for 6. And Zeal 0 for 4. Now 0 for 5. So the Mets are looking for hit number one off of Ooh. Armando Benitez. Just a tad away. Just a tad on the outside part of the plate. That was the pitch. Maybe for Mike Piazza, he'd like to have back. That's double. If he gets to us, double right center. Yep. The one and two, foul away. Great matchup against a fastball hitter and a guy with a, you know the mid ninety fastball and Benitez. And they worked so much together when Armando was here. And you know what you're getting, and you're in the hole when you got two strikes. Try to keep yourself alive. Mike Piazza has never been a high strikeout guy. It's kind of a mono mono thing. Bounce it up there, two and two. Well, hitters are all for their last 38 against Armando Benitez. That's over 12 appearances, including tonight. And according to the Elias Sports Bureau, the 0 for 38 run is tied for the second longest streak since 1990. And it's going to continue and get a little larger over the last 39. Piazza rolls out softly, and they're two away in the night. So here's Phillips. He's gone one for three. Benitez in the process of lowering his ERA, which was minuscule to begin with. Major League best 0.30. Picked up his 20th save of the year. And the Marlins victory over the Mets last Sunday. He fires that one in there for a strike. Boy, a lot of first pitch strikes out of Benitez. Well, you got to know the hitter's taking a strike. You can't hit a three run home run here or a four run home run. You need base runners. This is a bit of a luxury that a power pitcher has. It Right down Broadway. Fly ball right field backing up Cabrera but room and he will make the catch and that's the ball game. And that's also the end of the New York Mets four game winning streak. The Marlins end their five their four game losing streak by a final score of five to one. Jack McKeon really has challenged his team to keep their egos at the door. Well tonight they had Carl Pavano on the hill he was very good pitching seven and two thirds. And Benitez hears some of the boos, but he continues to do perfect work out of their bullpen. Outstanding effort out of the from the pitching, actually, and the defense was outstanding for the Marlins as well. They turned that double play, that double play that Castillo started. Pavano pitched very well. He's not a guy that's a high-powered stuff. 
But he gets you out. You know, and he gave up that home run to Floyd. First inning, boom, and he bounced right back. Didn't bother him. Got a, you know, he's got the, the instincts of a bulldog. He did a fine job tonight. That was the only run that the Mets scored tonight. The Marlins win at 5 1. We'll wrap it up in a moment. There's your final score from Shea Stadium tonight. The Marlins 5 and the Mets 1. Stay tuned for the news at 10 with Jim Watkins and Kitey Todd coming up right here on the WB 11. Tom Seaver, Dave O'Brien with you as we wrap up this one. Carl Pavano too good tonight as he knocks off the Mets. GM turning point of this ball game. And Miguel Cabrera, he just had a terrific night. He got a single that came in the second inning. And then in the fourth inning, all he did was add a double down that left field line. And it came off the wall. Cliff Floyd could not get him at second base. And then another double in the sixth. And he that was he scored two runs in this ball game. He drove in a run, so he was in that middle of that mix is putting a five spot on the board for this Florida ball club, our GM turning point of the game. One of the things you're not gonna you can't forget was back in the sixth inning, the Mets were down four to one at the time. They had a home run by Cliff Floyd, and they the last thing the Florida Marlins wanted to have was a rally. Matsui led off with a single. You got the middle of the lineup coming in. Watch this play. Castillo, look at this. Nobody out, and all of a sudden, rally killer. Defense right there. Instead of a base hit and two men on for the middle of the lineup, you got two outs and nobody on. That was a crucial play for the Florida Marlins defense. That's how you win a gold glove, and he did last year for the first time in his career. Luis Castillo getting the double play going with a brilliant stab. Five to one the final. That's it from Shea. Join us on the WB11 for our next Met telecast coming up Sunday at 1 o'clock when the Mets play these Florida Marlins in the concluding game of the series. Stay tuned for the WB11 News at 10 with Jim Watkins and Kitey Tong. For Tom Seaver, I'm Dave O'Brien. Thanks so much for joining us. The Marlins win it 5-1. Good night, everybody.